Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. So today's video is about the five things to look for when you are purchasing your first Louis Vuitton or I guess any Louis Vuitton, especially for newbies. You might have seen my video about what to buy first and also the video about the five things to avoid. So here's another five things you should consider, especially when purchasing your first Louis Vuitton. Now also, I'm gonna tell you some funny stories of what customers may say or do when they're shopping because, you know, I'm a former client advisor and I like to share little funny stories. So the first thing I always notice and what I want people to consider, does the bag open? No, it always opens. Does the bag close? How does the bag close? So, case in point, the Neverfull and the On The Go tote. No, these bags do not close. Most totes do not close. And the Neverfull or any tote bag, honestly, it's the type of bag that every woman should have in her wardrobe. Tote bags are great if you're kind of, you know, walking around the city, you can put your cardigan in there. So it's not necessarily going to close. You can put your water bottle and just throw everything in there. There is no longer a tote available on the market right now that has a zipper. There used to be, you can find those on the secondhand market. But for the most part, the Neverfull, which is Vuitton's best-selling bag, does not close. Sometimes someone will come in and look at that, this bag and she'll ask a million times, um, well, I don't like that it doesn't close because what if it falls over? What if someone pickpockets and they might stare at it? And um, sometimes they even ask, can I order it with a zipper? <laughs> so there's no Neverfull that has a zipper unless it's fake. And yes, I have seen people carrying Neverfulls with zippers. They do not exist in the authentic Louis Vuitton world. Anyways, I might be calling some of you out because it's funny, because like, you guys already know this. There's no, there's no zipper. Some people just might want to look at it and think, can I actually live with it? But if it bothers you that much and you might not be able to live with the bag without a zipper, completely pass on it. That goes to my next point of the closure. But the pochette Matisse is something that has what's called an S-lock. And then the S-lock is particular to Louis Vuitton. It's like the S-lock on the trunks of the original Louis Vuitton trunks. So the pochette Matisse, everybody knows this bag. It's so social media famous. But this S-lock, it has what's called a male piece and a female piece, which means that the lock has to match up exactly in its hole in order to close. And a lot of people don't like this because what ends up happening is that top glass scratches the bottom and of course people don't like that or you have to stop and actually match those pieces together. So you might consider one of these new bags, the Diane, that it looks like it's a buckle. I actually really like this bag. I love the 90s vintage feel of it. If you haven't noticed, everything 90s and early 2000s is coming back. So instead of the buckle closure that the vintage Vuittons have, this is now a magnet, and I think that's really cute. And another new bag, it's called the Favorite. It's, it's the new Favorite, not like the old Favorite, but the Favorite is now in Empreinte. It also has the S-lock closure, but instead of having to match it up like the Pochette Matisse, this one is also a magnet. So I do like the improvements that Vuitton has made with these particular two new models. So they are listening to you. Now let's go back to that Pochette Matisse in canvas. Another thing that you guys already know, but people ask over and over, the canvas version of the Pochette Matisse tends to have glazing issues. And this is because the way the bag opens and closes. So me as a former client advisor, 100% advise that you consider the leather version of the Pochette Matisse, please, please because also they are always in stock. So this was an issue when I worked there in 2019 and it still is. Okay, you guys already know, you already know. The lock, the clasp will scratch and your Pochette Matisse may very well have glazing issues, but you'll still ask for it. <laughs> so yes, I know I'm calling some of you guys out because some of these advisors who uh, write to me on Instagram and we've become friends, they say, yeah, you're telling them, and they come in with, they know, they know from watching YouTube, but if we tell them, if, if the client advisor tells them at the store, they're still not listening. They wanna believe, I got a unicorn, and it's not gonna happen to mine. But anyways, I digress. I highly recommend the Pochette Matisse in leather because 
it looks more elevated, it's more versatile. By that, you've heard me say, monogram is not for formal wear, but you're on prat, you can dress it up. And it really, right now, it's only a couple hundred dollars more than the canvas version. Now, when I work there, the, the difference between the price of the canvas and the leather was more like $400 to $500, and that gap is now smaller. So do yourself a favor and buy the Emprunt leather version of the Pochette Matisse. Okay, that was long-winded. Let me go to number three. So I've discussed before, are you buying a crossbody? Are you buying a shoulder bag? Are you buying a handbag? That's one thing to decide. Now, another thing I've noticed that not all crossbody straps are made equal. You have these guitar strap things and they tend to run a little bit shorter. So I have seen taller women try to wear the crossbody bags and it comes like to their ribs or right under their boob, when in actuality it is supposed to land on your hip. Here Michelle, I'm wearing is a crossbody. And um, so you can see how this strap is um, kind of like lifted up because this hook is pulling it. So when I put it, um, when I walk, see it keeps falling. It's annoying, it doesn't stay in place. And then when you open, okay, so when you open, it's hard. Okay, maybe I, uh, I usually don't keep this lock. See how hard it is, you have to use two hands. So those are some things to consider if you are going to primarily wear your bag as crossbody. Examples of crossbodies that aren't long enough. So we have the capucines, and that's not meant to be a crossbody. It does have a shoulder strap with it, which, Honestly, on most people, I think it looks really odd crossbody. So, point is, if you are looking for crossbody, buy a true crossbody bag instead of trying to convert a handbag or a shoulder bag to a crossbody. Just make sure it sits right there at your hip and not higher or lower, because then you're going to be uncomfortable when you wear it and it just won't look right. Bonjour, bonjour, this is Ash from Ashley Lux, and I'm here to make a little cameo on Michelle's channel from DLN Steel. Now, I'm going to talk about my little bag. It's not the most convenient bag to wear crossbody because of its shape. As you can see right here, this has a bulge around this part and then goes to a smaller size on top. Because it just bulges, it's really uncomfortable. You feel like you have something just against your body it's not a comfortable bag and actually if you can see from the side of the bag clearly it is not a crossbody bag because this is the bulge that i was talking with this entire section right here is a section that bulges and then it becomes smaller on top meaning it's not a very comfortable bag to be wearing crossbody because of the actual shape of the bag Thank you, Michelle. Number four, consideration. And I'm just going by what you guys drop into the comments. Bachetta versus the Dame Aben treated leather. Monogram versus Dame Aben. It always comes down to this. Do you like the Bachetta or do you like the chocolate covered Dame Aben treated leather? Here's what to consider with this. And some of you already know, the Bachetta leather is meant to patina which means it is meant to get darker over time. And you guys, just like your vehicle, just like your car, micro scratches, big scratches, anything can happen to your bag and it will. Don't think because you're paying over $2,000 for a handbag that it is resistant to scratches, dirt, stains, anything like that. It is not. It is not made of some kind of special titanium leather. It's just leather and canvas. So with that said, expect your vachetta to patina. Expect it to get watermarks. Expect it to just kind of age with you because that is the point of the Vuitton brand. And that's why the leather is not treated. If you cannot handle this, that is when I recommend the Dame Aben because I think it looks great. It looks beautiful, by the way. Then you don't have to worry about that leather changing color. But one thing I do want to point out, because the leather is treated, it is going to feel a little bit stiffer than the monograms that have the untreated leather. I'm going to add a fun fact here because most people come in and ask for the monogram as the traditional, the traditional pattern. 
and we know what they need. However, now you True Vuitton fans know that the first Louis Vuitton patron was actually the Delmier, which literally translates to checkerboard. So that was the first patron created in 1889 by Mr. Louis Vuitton himself. The monogram pattern was not created until 1896, and that was after Louis Vuitton passed away. Monogram was created by his son, George, as an homage to his father, and that's where you get the LV initials. And then you have the flowers, the floor, which is believed to be inspired by Japanese design. The Damier was reintroduced in 1999 as a 100th anniversary of the original Damier print. Actually, that's 110 years, but anyways, that was reintroduced in 1999 as an homage to the original print. Okay, and number five, I have said this before and I keep reiterating, buy the size that is appropriate for your body and for what you're going to be using the bag for. Don't make the mistake if you buy a bag that's too small because it fits your budget and it doesn't fit anything, but mo most, but what most people make the mistake is they buy a bag that's too big and it ends up being too heavy. Keep in mind, and I know having worked there, most of these handbags, they're pretty hefty. This canvas was made for travel. They were made for trunks, so they are not lightweight. Then you add the lining, the handle, sometimes you add some embellishments, some chains, a clochette, a bag charm, and they can get really heavy. So if that bag is too heavy for you to carry on your shoulder, on your hand, when it's empty, it is going to be really heavy when you start putting all of your stuff in there. My point is with all of this, buy the bag that is appropriate for you and don't get sucked into what you think social media wants, what your friends have, or keeping up with the Joneses, buy the bag that is going to work for you because then you'll get the most wear out of it and the longest use out of it and it should last you, really, it should last you a lifetime and you should be able to pass it on to the next generation. I hope I've given you some helpful tips. Be sure to watch my other videos about what to buy first and the five things to avoid when you are shopping for your Louis Vuitton. Thanks so much. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. My name is Michelle. I'll see you soon. Bye.